Hi, everybody. Oh, I thought I was going to the cab. <laughs> <laughs> One more appointment first. We'll talk about your impressions of the fight tonight. Um, well, with Misha and Kat, I mean, I, it kind of went the way I expected. Kat looked a lot better in the workouts. But Misha is usually the type that really fights above herself in competition, which is one of her better attributes. So, um, you know, Misha looked really good. I thought the, the fight was stopped maybe a little prematurely. But, I mean, Kat looked amazing, too. You know, I don't want to take anything away from her. She was lighting her up. And, you know, if Misha wants to complain, the fight should have been stopped, that she shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. So, um, yeah, I was really impressed with Kat tonight. I saw a lot of things that um, were helpful, so I'm glad I came, came and saw it live. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to tough, man. It's going to be cool. You mentioned you wanted to coach against Misha because you thought it would be good TV and a little bit fun. I think you just wanted to mess with her a little bit. Too. Yeah. But uh, now that's not the case, what do you think about uh, facing Kat and, and being across from her? Uh, well, I always said that the, the fight that I wanted the most was Kat. So um, I'm, I'm glad that we're actually going to be fighting. And um, on the show, you know, you never know. It would have been, I, I think I would have enjoyed tormenting. Misha, uh, whereas you know, Kat seems pretty cool, but I mean, I don't really know her at all, but she seems cool, and um, it, yeah, it's gonna be cool regardless. Regardless of who I'm coaching against, it's such a unique and historical situation, which seems to be coming up a lot these days. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome regardless. I saw a lot of people on the internet saying there's no way either one of these girls could hang with Rhonda. Um, did you take that impression away at all, or did you feel like do you feel like she's gonna be a worthy adversary? Um, I mean, technically, Kat has a better record than I do right now. She's she's eight and I'm seven and zero. And um, I, who is it? it? Was like Rashad and Leoto that were only two undefeated people fighting for the championship before. So this is something very uncommon and very special. And um, I'm happy to be part of it. And I always think of myself as the underdog, regardless Did of uh, what other people think. Sorry. Did you see anything with the submissions that Misha was trying to use to finish Kat that maybe sparked your eye as far as uh, Kat's submission defense? Um, yeah, there were some things that uh, Misha could have done better, that she was in some really good positions that she could have capitalized on um, a little better than she did. But um, it's easy to say that looking from the outside, you never really know. But um, yeah, if I was in a similar situation, I would think that it would have ended differently. Yeah. Did you hear about the actual series moving, making the move to UFC on uh, FSN for the Ultimate Fighter next season, that it'll be in a new time slot on Wednesdays at 10 p.m.? And what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I was actually there for the, the upfronts when they announced the launch of Fox Sports 1. And so um, I'm really excited to be one of the uh, inaugural programs of the new channel. So. Um, yeah, I, it's it's a really cool position to be in because um, I don't know I I don't I don't really know that much about the TV business or anything like that but um, it's it's gonna be really cool everyone from Fox is really excited about Fox Sports One and um, if Tough is one of the first shows that they're having on it then it's gonna be a great channel. It seems like you and uh, Uriah developed a friendship. But what did you think of the fight? Was um, you know, it's so like. Uriah and Kelvin are like, they're just it's like, what do you like better, like peach or apple pie? You know what I mean? I'm just kind of stuck. I'm like, I just like pie. Just don't make me choose. And, um, you know, Kelvin's adorable and awesome, and you, just, you can't help but be happy for him. And Uriah is an amazing guy. He came and stayed with us for a while, and um, we um, we love him, you know? And uh, it, it was it was a really, really good fight, man. And I expected Kelvin to really came out, and he showed a lot, a lot of heart. And um, I think that... Uri showed a lot of his tools that he has, but I don't think he um, implemented them as well as he could. But I mean, that's the good thing about the show. The show is not to pick the next champion of the UFC, it's to pick the next you know, uh, new guys coming up. And I just saw so much potential in both of them. I can't wait to see what they do from here on out. Were you concerned at all about the, uh, the, the women's fight tonight, that it would come out as well as it was? I mean, were you thinking, well, I hope it's not a flat fight because I want it you know, to build up? Oh yeah, I was very much hoping for an exciting fight with the girls, you know, and this is the first time that I was able to watch a women's UFC fight from the outside, and so I was really kind of paying attention to how the crowd was receiving them and how, it, you know, everyone thought of the fight, and it was awesome. People got way more excited for, like, the scrambles and exchanges between the between the chicks than they did with the guys, it seemed like, and whenever they start swinging, everyone freaks out for that, you know, little, little bit, and... Um, uh, yeah, I think that they performed extremely well. It was a good back and forth fight, and um, I'm happy it went the way that it did. Focusing on your next uh, role as a coach, I mean, how much coaching experience do you have, whether it be in judo or mixed martial arts? I mean, is, is this a is this a cap you've worn before? Yeah, I, I did uh, uh, quite a bit of coaching in judo before. Um, I did helped run the West Coast Judo Training Center for. Uh, for a while for like just little kids and um, when, when it got to the point where I 
had too much time taken away from MMA, and then my mom kind of took over the program. And um, I was also teaching at uh, Gompers Middle School in Watts. We started that program there. And that was another thing that my mom was nice enough to take over when uh, all this took up all my time all of a sudden. And uh, But mostly I've been working with like kids trying to cross over into that senior like um, age group. You know, people that are just finishing juniors, moving to seniors, which is the really hardest time, which I think is uh, draws a lot of parallels to this Ultimate Fire Tournament. People are looking to move up to the next level and trying to, you know, get on and I don't know how I can say better than move on to the next level. I have other things than that, but um, uh, yeah, I have some experience in it, but I have to have to help my own coach who has a lot more than me. So I'm probably pretty much going to be looking over my shoulder to him at the time, like, so what do I say right now? And um, I'm going to have a lot of great help. So we'll Have you given any thought to who else you might bring in? And is there any chance that your mom might be uh, helping you coach? Don't ruin my surprises. You guys have to watch the series and just find out. <laughs> but yeah, there, there would be, I, I, it would be incomplete without momisms and live momisms are usually the best. <laughs> How do you uh, feel about teaching guys and potential future opponents as well? Um, I mean, I, I'm used to, to teaching guys that want to learn, you know, and I, I hope that the kind of guys that try out for this ultimate fire are the kind that are willing to learn from women and are open-minded and don't give me a lot of trouble. And um, uh, as for coaching future competition, it doesn't really bother me at all. I, I feel like we need the we need the rising tide to lift all the boats pretty much right now and so um, I want these girls to get as good as possible and get as much exposure as possible and if it ends up being a detriment to me in the future well I just have to be that much better of a competitor. What, what techniques are you going to look for when you choose your team? Um, I don't know. I really don't know yet. Um, I don't think I'm going to try and look for people to be little copies of me. I'm going to try and look for people to be good versions of themselves. And I'm um, looking at everyone as overall, I think, as fighters to pick them. Is it more ground fighting, more stand up? Does it matter? Um, I don't think it matters. I don't really, I don't favor one style over the other, you know, as a someone who watches. Yeah. Me personally, I kind of do. Um, but uh, no, you don't know until you watch people fight. There's a lot of other factors that you look at besides people's speciality. Trials are, are, are Monday. You know, how deep do you think the, the class of women that are going to be picking from is going to be? I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of girls hitting me up saying that they're going. And um, the, I just found out that I'm not allowed to go to the tryouts. I was all planning to go. And I guess they don't usually have the coaches picked while they're having the tryouts. Like, this is a new thing that they know everything ahead of time. So um, I'm not going to be able to see any of them until the, um, they fight to get into the house. So um, I don't know. We'll see. Can you talk about what the response from the fans has been like since your first fight with the UFC? Um, amazing. I, I, there wasn't anywhere I could walk today without people screaming and, you know, screaming in a good way. Not like, we hate you. I didn't really hear any of those. Um, but, yeah, the fan response has been amazing. And, um, man, I'm, I'm just lucky. I, I'm, I'm lucky. I have no complaints, man. It's cool. I love it. Since there's men and women, do you know how many they're going to pick of each? Uh, oh man, you're gonna make me sound like a really uninformed. What do you mean? I don't know. I'm just is it eight and eight, or are they gonna? Sounds like a great number. Why don't you stick with that? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have any expectations for what you think the dynamic's gonna be like in house? People are trying to figure out, you know, is it gonna be hijinks and you know guys and girls and sexual tension, or do you think like there's a responsibility on the women coming in to kind of set a tone that there is a, a professionalism to this and that they are still trying to carve their way out in the UFC. I think the series itself has kind of been going away from that kind of uh, attention grabby, you know, reality TV-esque kind of um, genre and more into just a documentary series on, you know, the, the toughest, most competitive tournament in martial arts. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that it's going to be very similar in this season, at least on my team, because I mean, I'm going to have to remind these girls that this is the first impression that you're setting. It's the first impression that you're setting for people for, for women MMA fighters, because this is a lot of like, you know, exposure that they're going to be getting mm -hmm. and you know if they're they're chicks I mean if they're the chick that got that was screwing around the house for the rest of their career they're going to be known as the chick that was screwing around the house and you know the sponsor's going to be looking at that you know everybody's going to be looking at that so if you think it's a hundred thousand dollar worth of that lay then go for it but <laughs> I'm just going to remind them there's going to be a lot of very permanent consequences to how they carry themselves in the house. Have you had any pushback from your, your comments about Fallon Fox to the New York Post has been as UFC or anybody else come to talk to you about it? No, why would we? Oh, this, I was want to make sure there wasn't any oh, policy you know, violations of that. How would I have violated the policy? Uh, I think the first quote of the story. Uh, what was the quote? Oh, something with a you used a term for a male anatomy. I said pecker? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
how would you like me to use it? Oh, no, I was just wanted to make sure there's nothing, there's no problem. No, I just wanted to make sure that I wanted, I understood your question. How would you like me to phrase it? Oh, no, that's, I have no problem with it. I okay, yeah, no problems. move on. Ronda, are you worried about uh, any of your athletes, you know, using alcohol in excess during the show? There didn't seem to be too much of that. Are you going to be regulating that on your team? Um, yeah, I'm mean, expecting them to hold themselves as professionals. I expect them to be eating as professionals and behaving as such. You know, they're not going to be eating Ben and Jerry's. They're not going to be chugging down, you know, a bunch of Jack. And if uh, if they are, then I did a very poor job picking my team. Are they going to get the one beer after practice? <laughs> <laughs> they might if they're good. If they're good, I mean, it, it, it depends. I don't know. We'll see if uh, if they're being. Very, if they're carrying themselves the way that they, we want them to, then we'll find ways to reward them. I don't know if one beer will do it or not. <laughs> Sounds like you're taking the role of coach pretty seriously. You said as long as the guys are willing to learn from me and don't give me any trouble in regulating the alcohol, it's a big opportunity for you. Yeah. To push the sport in the direction you see. It. Yeah, I, I think that people need to see that, uh, that we're serious about this and we're not just a bunch of hoodlums. Uh, we're going to teach them armbar everything and then a lot of other things as well. You mentioned Cat was the opponent that you wanted uh, stylistically. What about her style is intriguing to you as, as, as an opponent? Oh, her stance. She's a southpaw. And um, in judo, that was a stance that I was used to fighting my whole life. You know, if you're right-handed, that's how you stand in judo. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm very, very much looking forward to that. It's a lot more return to what's comfortable because um, uh, I kind of had to relearn to fight people with an opposite stance in MMA. So, um, yeah, I'm be really looking forward to setting up a whole lot more creative takedowns from uh, from that side. So we'll see. Except what? Me? Oh, no. Why would I need to change for somebody else? They need to change for me. Ron, I know Misha rubbed you the wrong way. Does Kat rub you at all the wrong way? She seems like a cool chick, but I don't really know her for the whole in a while. I mean, we haven't really sat down and made s'mores yet, but um, who knows? We might in the tough house. Stay tuned. <laughs> When's the first time you saw Kat? The first time I saw her was, I think we were getting ready for the press conference for the UFC 157. And uh, she came backstage and, um, you know, she said hello and actually, like, you know, shook my hand. It was very nice. So um, my first impression with her, she was a very respectful and cool chick. And uh, but we're going to be getting to know each other very, very well. So we'll see. Is there an offer to take cat surfing after uh, your fight with her? Um, I mean, not yet. I mean, we just said hi or bye. But um, the offer's still open for Liz. Hey, call me. <laughs> Thanks.